We've all heard some scary predictions for the future, including sea level rise and increased storm intensity and frequency. This could spell bad news for the world's coral reefs. Will reefs and islands be able to withstand bigger, stronger waves as a result of climate change? In fact, some very healthy and diverse reefs manage to survive and even thrive under the pounding of very large waves. My name is Stephanie Deuce. I'm researching how these high energy reefs have evolved to withstand wave action. In particular, I'm looking at the reef's first line of defence, the spur and groove zone. So what is the spur and groove zone? This zone occurs right at the edge of the reef where the corals meet the open ocean. It's the zone where waves break as they move from the deep ocean onto the shallow reef. The spurs are made of coral and coralline algae, while the grooves are sandy or gravelly, or sometimes just bare reef rock. It's thought that these spur and groove formations are in tune with the local wave environment and act as a natural breakwater system. Under the water, spur and grooves are important as well because they provide really complex habitat, ideal for reef fish and other animals, including sharks and turtles. Spur and grooves are also one of the most productive zones of modern reefs and are responsible for producing much of the reef sediment that is critical to the formation of reef islands. Despite their importance, very little research into spur and grooves has been conducted. We don't know. How do the spur and groove features form? How do they relate to their hydrodynamic environment? Will they be able to evolve and protect reefs if wave conditions change in the future? My research is aimed at answering these questions. I'm using satellite imagery to map the spur and groove zones of different reefs at a broad scale. I'm also taking photos up close to document the coral and algae species that form the spurs and the gravel or sand found in the bottom of the grooves. I'm also using instruments to take direct measurements of the waves and currents within the system. Finally, I'm taking core samples of the corals. These samples will allow us to look into the past and see what types of coral have been growing there. And by dating this coral, we will learn how old the spur and grooves are, how they form, and how they're likely to evolve into the future. This will be the first time spur and grooves in the Great Barrier Reef have been cored. And we hope that by understanding this mysterious and important zone, we will be better placed to manage the Great Barrier Reef and reefs worldwide for a changing climate into the future.